In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather on this feast of the body and blood of Christ to open ourselves up to become more, more the body and blood of Christ. Opening ourselves up to the transforming power of God's love, we stand here then, ready to be challenged by the word, nourished by the Eucharist, transformed into the body and blood of Christ for the sake of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from 
the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It looks like we're going to be taking Jesus into the streets. That was a thought that came to me many years ago when I was in Guatemala, and it was this feast, the feast of the body and blood of Christ. We celebrated Mass, and all of a sudden, people were starting to gather in a large line, almost like a parade. There was all sorts of conversation and laughing and talking, something that we weren't used to at, at Mass. And then the priest took a monstrance with the body of Christ, and we began processing through the streets of Guatemala in Antigua, um, singing and, and praying, and it was a wonderful experience of Jesus in the streets. I bring that up because so often when we consider the body and blood of Christ, we have a sense of right here, and that's important. It's important to gather and worship. But what does it mean? Why is it so important? And these readings seem to not even speak to the uh, institution of the Eucharist. Um, even Paul alludes to it, but there's nothing from the synoptics. We have John here saying, I am. Well, if you notice, he says to the Jewish crowd, so they would have understood that I am is important. I am is the name of God. And I am spoke to Moses and said, this is who I will be. When, you, when the people ask, who's, going, who's this God who's going to be walking with you? Tell them, I am. I will be with you as I am. Will I be with you? Which then probably presumes not as you want me to be or not as you think I ought to be. Because if you remember from our first reading, we hear that God, even though they said, take these snakes away, he didn't. He 
he put, he said, look at this pole with the snake on it. Take our thirsts away. They were always thirsty. They were always hungry. But God was always providing. He was with them as he was a constant companion on the journey. I think that's important for us. I think that's important because in some ways we get so caught up in where is God? Maybe God's right next to us. Maybe he's in the streets. That's something to think about. When we think of Eucharist, what do we think of? Well, we hear that first person, that account from Paul. Now, what I find intriguing, he doesn't say when you receive the blood, when you receive the, the body, it's when you participate in, when you share in. You hear at Eucharist, at the end of the consecration of the blood, do this in memory of me. I think it's important to hold on to that, that we do what we do here as Jesus commanded, but why? Why do we do it in memory of him? Maybe there's more we have to do in memory of him. Maybe it really is to be taken, blessed, broken, and given to others. Maybe, just maybe, we're called to be that body in all its implications. It's not just a nice little Jesus and me thing, but we're sent as we hear. We're sent just like Jesus was sent by the Father. To do what? To walk, to journey, to maybe be Jesus in the streets. That's important. So I'm going to ask you to think and reflect upon what we often speak of as the Eucharistic action. First of all, to take or receive. We usually take or receive something that's a gift or something that we need or maybe something that we want, but it's usually within the context of gift. How is your life, who are the people in your life who have been gift to you, and how have you taken that? receive that experience with them? How have you been a gift to others? How have you given yourself over to others? Do they see you as gift? How are we Eucharist? Blessed. Barakah is the Jewish term for blessing, but inside of that is a very important concept of thanksgiving. Are you grateful? Are you grateful no matter what because you know that God is walking with us? We hear that in the first reading. I was with you. We hear Jesus say, I am the living bread. Living. Taken. Blessed. How are we a people of gratitude no matter what? Here comes the hard part. It'd be so much easier just to take, say thank you, and then give. But there's the most important part, I think, which is the breaking. We don't like to hear that term because that means we have to be open. We have to allow ourselves to be changed, to be transformed, to hurt, to deal with things we don't want to deal with. Uh, Father Merck's homily last week was a breaking open for us to maybe look at how are we Eucharistic? How are we the body and blood of Christ? How are we Jesus in the streets, considering all the stuff that's going on in our world? Are we allowing ourselves to be broken, to be sacrificed? Not an easy thing. But I find it interesting that early on in the church, what we do here wasn't called the Mass or liturgy. It was called the breaking of the bread. In fact, if you remember in the Acts of the Apostles and I think the third Sunday, they recognized Jesus. How? In the breaking of the bread. In the brokenness. Because when you're broken, you can be open and you share and you're transformed and you transform others. And finally, given. 
taken, blessed, broken, given. You hear me say it all the time. See what you believe and become what you receive, the body and blood of Christ. And again, the question is, are we changed when we leave from these celebrations? Are we different? Are we really Jesus who's going to be walking in the streets? Are we really going to be someone who does in memory of Jesus by being broken open so that we can be food and drink for the world? Whatever that food and drink is, maybe it's physical food and drink. Maybe it's an open heart, an open mind. Maybe it's companionship on the journey. Who knows where the Lord's leading, but it's not just to sit here. We're called to be on the move, to make the kingdom happen in our lives of love and service. It's not been easy, and it almost seems paradoxical, or at least ironic, that we're celebrating the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, which we consider central to the Mass, obviously, when we're still so many in isolation. But how, in your isolation, are you taken, blessed, broken, and shared, given? We all are the body and blood of Christ. Because if Jesus is in God, and we are in Jesus, we too are in God, and we really do share in the life of each other, no matter what. As I finish, I'd like you to hear a quote from one of my favorite people, Dorothy Day. She is the founder of the Catholic Worker House and Worker Movement. Uh, I think she's going to be beatified or canonized soon. Here's her take on Eucharist. We cannot love God unless we love each other. We know him in the breaking of bread. And we know each other in the breaking of bread. And we are not alone anymore. Heaven is a banquet. And life is a banquet too, even with a crust of bread, where there is companionship. We have all known the long loneliness, and we have learned that the only solution is love. And that love comes with community. And I'd like to add, humbly, and that community needs to be Jesus in the streets. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
who we now open our hearts to a God who continues to walk with us on our journey. For the church, that through our sharing in the Eucharist, we may be transformed more and more into the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper communion with Christ, that as we receive the body and blood of Christ, we may take on the mind and heart of Christ and continue the mission of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who cannot receive the Eucharist, particularly those in isolation, in refugee centers, or imprisoned for their faith, that God will strengthen them and make God's presence known to them through others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this Christian community, our Providence family, many members but one body, that we may be a people of deep gratitude and allow God to continue to build us into a community of faith and love. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from famine or drought, that God will nourish them, sustain them on their journey, and supply the assistance they need. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who hunger spiritually, that through the manna of God's word, they may be nourished and find the way to live in peace and wholeness of life. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence in our cities, that God will give courage to all who are working for peace, help the voices of those who have experienced injustice to be heard, and turn the hearts of those prone to violence toward new ways of working for change. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have experienced violence, that God will protect them from further harm, right the injustices that have occurred, and give them hope. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governmental and civic leaders, that God will give them wisdom to address the unrest, insight into righting the injustices, and words that will unite society. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill and those who care for them, that God will send healing to the sick, especially these members of the Providence family. Luigi Alberico, Bridget Albert, Philomena Ahrens, Kathy Bibb, Matthew Camp, Arlene Cavallone, Joan Dagnus, Mark Arison, Michael Fred, Rose George, Mark Guzman, Nikki Houlihan, Deacon Bob Kaminsky, Janice Latz, Noreen Lionhood, Lynn Looney, Jean Louise, Haya Malik, Matthew Malik, Roe Miller, Joan Meyer, Patrick Rogers, Luke Schuler, Thelma Slemp, Marlene Sturdy, Priscilla and Chuck Thompson, Mike Venetti, Mary Ellen Walker, Bev Welsh, and all whom we remember in the quiet of our hearts. We also pray that God will provide strength and wisdom to those who care for them and inspiration to those researching treatments and vaccines. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died, especially those who have died by violence, abuse, and neglect. We pray for those who died without anyone present or to love them into new life. We also pray for our families and friends, and especially from our Providence family, Larry Walsh Sr. and Vivian Cicero. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, we trust you are with us on this journey. Give us the bread of life, your love, and companionship on our way to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, we ask you to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, grant your church the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery and the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human family, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heaven, heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, for you love the human family and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst as we are gathered by his love, and now for us, as once for the disciples, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, with all bishops, presbyters, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother of Good Counsel, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Augustine, St. Monica, St. Rita, St. Clair, St. Thomas, St. Nicholas, St. John of Agun, our patron saints, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. longing for the fullness of God's reign of love in our lives and in our world, we pray as our Lord and brother Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share that gift with one another. Peace. 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 Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. See what you believe in, become what you receive, the body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.